So apathy and anhedonia, they cut across the board. We see this in every psychiatric disorder. And uh, with that, what I want to do is now over to Vlad for the neurobiology. Thank you very much, Roger. By the way, I, I don't want to, I'm a romantic. I don't want to sort of be jaundicing marriage and all that. Just, right, no, no. Uh, no. Yeah. We, we're both very happily <laughs> married men. Uh, so talking about some of these circuits, and, and uh, uh, Roger has pointed out that there uh, needs to be a balance between anticipated reward and potential loss or threat and danger. Well, the circuit that really captures that essence is a limbic circuit, and it's a bidirectional communication between amygdala and nucleus accumbens. Nucleus accumbens, uh, pleasure, reward, amygdala, novelty, but especially threat and danger. So uh, you who were there for the previous talk, remember my mentioning the Las Vegas circuit? How you evaluate potential and risk of loss versus risk of reward and winning. Mm. And it is modulated, as you have said, cognitively by prefrontal cortical areas, uh, puts you in an interesting situation. If your Las Vegas circuit is not working very well, you are making very bad decisions at the blackjack table. <laughs> Next day, uh, you will come to realization that somehow, at some point at night, you have emptied out your retirement fund. And at that point, your lateral habenula becomes activated. And lateral habenula is a misery generator. Mm. Uh, it shuts down both dopamine and serotonin. Serotonin buffers some of those negative emotions. You have mentioned vicissitudes of using SSRIs. It's good that they uh, buffer stress experience. It's good that they buffer anxiety, depression, irritability, but it comes with strings attached. It buffers positive emotion. When you activate lateral habenula, you will strip away buffering effect of serotonin and rewarding effect of dopamine at the same time. Neurotransmitters involved in these circuits are dopamine, glutamate, GABA, we will see uh, opioids, and you have seen, uh, who have attended the previous talk, opioids have quite a role. So this is just a quick map of what all matters. And uh, uh, going into our monoamine medica medications, monoamine modulating medications, to remind you, this is corticostradal thalamocortical circuit, we have spoken about this, uh, communication between components of this circuit is conducted by GABA and glutamate. So prefrontal cortex speaks to ventral striatum, which is the emotional and the reward zone via glutamatergic transmission. Ventral striatum itself is a bundle of GABA neurons and fibers. Now, while GABA and glutamate are key neurotransmitters in communication in this circuit, as you can see, they are modulated by dopamine, mm -hmm. serotonin, mm -hmm. and norepinephrine. Mm -hmm. uh, they're modulated at a cortical level. They're modulated at the level of striatum. So we have an interaction between monoamines, GABA, and glutamate that will uh, mm -hmm. uh, eventually establish this balance. Uh, what kind of risk are we willing to tolerate? And should we be rationally optimistic or should we be a little bit more cautious <laughs> and pessimistic? Got it. And we see when it comes to impact of serotonin and dopamine, relatively speaking, when it comes to cognition, when it comes to sensory motor activity, dopamine boosts it. On the other hand, serotonin has a buffering effect. Same is true in so-called salient circuit. So the circuit that provides emotional echo to our sensory experience, serotonin blunts it, dopamine increases it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, mm -hmm. we were talking about, yep. you were talking about apathy, emotional blunting with yep. SSRIs. You boost serotonin, the outcome is yep. experience of reward will be blunted together with stress, anxiety, irritability, and right. depression. Right. It's a very expensive trade-off, so to say. And uh, talking about some of the mechanisms, <coughs> serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine modulate each other at the brainstem level. 
Serotonin has a significant impact on dopamine. So serotonin has a projection to GABA interneuron in the brainstem. GABA interneuron, as you know, is inhibitor. So whenever you boost serotonin, it via serotonin 2C receptors activates GABA, which suppresses dopamine. Mm. So think through this. If you block serotonin 2C on the GABA interneuron, what's going to happen to dopamine? Is it going to go up or down? Just give me a signal. Up or down? You block 2C, dopamine goes up. Mm -hmm. So re remember that. That may be of use to us. And then we see that indeed these brain regions involved in motivation, apathy, and anhedonia, mm -hmm. as you said, Roger, they very much overlap. Mm -hmm. And it's and interesting that to a degree there is synergistic effect. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the activity in nucleus accumbens, in healthy controls, and in people who have a relatively low mood, they're blue, they're melancholy, but they're not clinically depressed, mm -hmm. nucleus accumbens is going to be doing its job. On the other hand, if they have anhedonia, nucleus accumbens will be underactive. Dopamine input into nucleus accumbens will be lower. But if they have double whammy, if they have major depressive disorder, in addition to that anhedonia, that is where nucleus accumbens activity really bottoms out.